What's up, people? Long time no see. Happy Monday. Hope all of you are having a great day. Um, so, I just wanted to update everybody. The reviews have been less because of work schedule, time constra- uh, constraints. So, I'm trying to work all that out. Um, but I do plan on doing more. Don't worry. And I was kind of taking a little bit of a hiatus. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode today. I think it was the best. Um, it was a very fun episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Dante, as usual, is a little petty bitch. When he walked in and he saw Valerie with Curtis, I was looking at Dante like, seriously, go be with your wife. Um, He still seems like he's very bothered. By the fact that Valerie has moved on. And I don't get it though. If you're so in love with Lulu. And y'all working this out. Why are you so bothered about Valerie. And her personal life. Obviously you're not 100% over Valerie. And it's been obvious. So I don't know. They need to figure that shit out. Because I'm getting so tired of the roller coaster. That's Lulu and Dante. That shit is getting annoying. <coughs> <clears throat> But anyway, I like Valerie and Curtis together. They make a nice couple. Obviously, Curtis is still holding back his personal life. um, Because he told her something about, you know, a little story about him and Jordan. But I feel like he's holding back. He's not telling her the real story. He's just telling her a prefix of it. Like, you're not telling her the exact situation. Um... <clears throat> but I do like them together, though. They look nice. Um, and I am happy that more people are getting involved in this Crimson story because I am interested in this storyline. <clears throat> it's a nice storyline. I think it's real fun. It's something different. You know what I mean? And you're putting more focus on Crimson. And I'm enjoying it. Because um, obviously, Julian Jerome has been sabotaging his own company for the tax write off. Julian's a fucking idiot. He's an idiot. Like, seriously. Destroying your own company so that way you could just write it off as a tax thing. Like, that's just stupid. I mean, I get it. It's good business at the end of the day. But if Crimson is a huge success and it's making piles of money, why not just pay what you owe to tax, you know, the IRS and just move on? You know, that's another way to go. And I think he should go down that route. Why sabotage everything, you know, all the success that Maxi and Nina have been creating? Why sabotage that for your own for your own gain? Either way, this is a win-win for Julian. You make money, you pay the IRS. If the company did go bankrupt, you could just write it off. Either way, I mean, whether it's a success or fail, you you win. So he should just let it be. <clears throat> but um Nina decided to hire Curtis as a PI, as her PI to fish out who's been sabotaging um, Crimson. So she's going to pay him $500 a day. And of course, Curtis wants to drag it out a little longer because he wants to make sure he keeps getting that money every day. But he said um, he feels that he could easily win this. Like he feels like he could easily figure out who's been sabotaging But he's going to try to stretch it out a few days so he can keep getting that money. I don't blame him, personally. I can't really say that I blame him. Um, And of course, Valerie, I guess, is going to be his assistant. But I'm definitely feeling this partnership between Maxie and Nina. I love it. I think it's like one of the best storylines this year so far. I think it's a really fun story and I'm interested in it. Tracy. I feel bad for what's going on with Tracy. I really do. Like, this is not how I want to see Tracy quarter me. All vulnerable. Her life hanging in the balance. But I think it's brought her and Monica even more closer since this thing happened. And I do love their conversations. But I felt like it was a little hard watching their conversation today. When Tracy was telling her that if she ever becomes incapable of making her own decisions, she wants Monica to pull the plug. She wants Monica to just end it. You know what I mean? 
And that's a tall order. That's something like very serious to ask somebody to do. You know, that's a lot to ask somebody to do, you know, pull the plug on you. But I get where Tracy's coming from because she doesn't want to be in a coma. She doesn't want to be a vegetable for the rest of her life. And I definitely get that. So, you know, it was a big decision, but in the end, it might be the right one because <clears throat> she was, you know, but Tracy had the right thinking going into this. I mean, she's trying to be positive, but at the same time, she was planning for the worst. And sometimes you have to do that. You know, it's good to think positive and think that you're going to beat these things. And but there is a chance that you won't. And I think that's what I love about Tracy the most, because the thing about Tracy is she's a realist. And that's how I am. She reminds me of a lot. You know, my personality. I'm a realist. You know, I think about, you know, I plan for the for the good and the bad. A lot of people should definitely do that, though. Um, You know, just be prepared. And, you know, it was good that Dylan finally called Ned to let him know what the hell is going on with their mother. Um, cause Ned needs to know. And of course, Wally Kurth is coming back as Ned. So it's going to be really good to see Ned back in action again. Um, Dr. Monroe, I think it was smart of him to continue with this case behind Dr. Mays' back. Cause Dr. Mays is an idiot. I mean, he, he's so sure of himself. He had it all figured out that Tracy had cancer, but she didn't. But I, at the end of the day, though, I, I agree with Dr. Monroe. The, le the lesions on her brain could make somebody, you know, think that it is cancer. But he was sure it was cancer. That's the problem. He was so sure of it without even having the accurate information. He didn't even have the, the full information to even diagnose her with cancer. And you're sitting there telling her and the family that it's cancer, but you're not even sure. You're just assuming without even having all the facts. If I was a doctor, I would never tell a patient or her family, oh, you got cancer. I would never do no shit like that. Not without having definitive proof. Because now you're going to get them all worried about nothing. What could be nothing or it could be something else. But don't give them a definitive answer if you don't even have a definitive answer. Don't do that. Um, so the, re the results came back. And the lesions were not cancerous. So Tracy does definitely does not have cancer. Um, they pretty much, Dr. Mays told her, I don't know what the hell you have. Basically, he doesn't know what is wrong with her. But Dr. Monroe, when he was talking to Brad, he said that he's seen something similar to this. So he asked Tracy when she was in Mexico, did she drink the tap water? Did she eat anything? And then she remembered that she ate the delicacies that um, Ned, I mean, that Larry Ashton gave her. And that would, that's what could have caused these lesions to appear in her brain. That's what could have caused all of this mess. Tracy was pissed. <laughs> Tracy was cussing Larry out. She was cussing Paul out. She was pissed. She said she got rid of one deadbeat ex-husband and now here come another deadbeat ex-husband. She was pissed. I can't say I blame her, but, you know, she chose them. These are the men she chose to marry and have kids by, so it is what it is. Um... I love the scene, though, with her, Monica, and um, Dylan, where she had this hallucination that Monica was seducing Ned again because she had the hallucination that Dylan was Ned. Because you remember back in the day, Ned and Monica slept together back in the day. They had an affair. So she was hallucinating. It was so sad to see Tracy like that. Like, it really was sad, like, seriously, to see her space out like that have these, you know, memory lapses, these hallucinations, seizures. Like, it's crazy to see a strong woman go from being strong to being vulnerable like this. But Jane Elliott is knocking it out the park. I will say that. She definitely should get an Emmy this year. Definitely.
she deserves it. Um, so Dr. Mays basically threatens to get rid of Dr. Monroe and Brad, basically firing them. I'm like, Dr. Mays has no authority to fire another doctor or a lab technician. That all goes through the chief of staff and the board. He has no authority to do either of those. So and he's just pissed because Monroe got to the bottom of this and he didn't. That's what he's pissed about. He needs to put his ego to the side. Like, seriously. Um. So Monica called another doctor who specializes in infectious diseases. And of course, the doctor she called was none other than Michael Easton's character, new character for the 100th time, Dr. Hamilton Finn. Um, I will say this about Michael Easton. He is a good actor. But if this character does not work out on this show this time around, like the other few characters haven't, they need to shut it down and stop bringing in new characters. <clears throat> like, they really do. They need to stop bringing in new characters for him to play. Like, seriously. If it don't work out, he don't work out. Let it go. Um. So, anyway. On to the trial. Or the, uh court case it was a battle of the titans alexis davis jerome versus diane miller i was looking forward to this showdown because we all know in the past diane has always kicked alexis's ass in the courtroom but it was kind of fun though this was a this court case was so fun because alexis came in with a strong game plan and she had backup and she had a definitive plan of winning this case. And Carly happened to factor into this. And I loved it. Um, when Carly brought in all the girls and stuff. The mothers with their babies. And they were breastfeeding in the courtroom. The judge was just going to fuck off. He's like what is the hell. Everybody started taking off their shirts. Alexis. Maxie. Nina. Carly. As soon as Carly took off her shirt. I was like. Sonny. Come get your chick. Come get your wife. She tripping. Come get her. Olivia busting open her shirt. I said, Dante, come get your mama. Come get them. But I loved it, though, because you know what? Everybody stood up not only for Olivia's right to breast free, breastfeed, but they stood up for all women's rights to breastfeed. And the judge found in her favor. I loved it. And even Diane was happy. I think deep down she was actually happy that she lost this case. Diane was definitely happy to lose this case because the only reason Diane took this case obviously was for the money. I mean, come on, you're representing the mayor. Big dollars. <clears throat> so she didn't really care about winning this case. Not really. I mean, of course, she did her legal expertise. It's not like she threw the case on purpose, but she didn't really care about losing either. Either way, she gets paid, so it doesn't really matter to Diane. Um... So now the mayor basically sees Alexis as her new enemy now. Oh, Lord. Alexis, Alexis, Alexis. Beware. Because I'm going to tell you right now, going up against a mayor ain't nothing to play with. But the mayor was abusing her authority, though. She really was. She was abusing her power. Um, and Carly even threatened to sue the mayor also if the mayor didn't reopen the metro court because she had had the city inspector shut down the metro court and even diane told the mayor you're abusing your authority and there's no reason to shut down the metro court because there is no health issues at the metro court so therefore the mayor would lose a second lawsuit which would cost her even more money so the mayor of course decided to reopen the metro court which was a wise decision um on her part but alexis better beware though you don't want the mayor on your ass but anyway this was a pretty fun episode though i enjoyed it maxi and nino were hilarious as usual um dante kind of pissed me off when he walked into crimson though with his handcuffs and then talking about some oh corporate espionage is not our jurisdiction that's the feds. Oh, Dante, shut up. When has jurisdiction ever stopped 
the PCPD from interfering in any case. You're a walking conflict of interest with most of the cases that he handles. He's a walking conflict of interest. He can't. He's always on Sonny's cases, Michael case, whoever family member. That's a conflict of interest, but he doesn't say shit about that. But anyway, I'll see you all you later. Have a great day. See you all you later.